Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how we can allow a certain user on our website to uh, maybe switch the look of their website and certain settings like going between light and dark mode and then actually saving this information and uh, storing it with that user. So right now, we can do this with multiple settings, but in this case, we're just gonna allow the user to switch these modes. And right now, if we're in dark mode, we can refresh the page or if the user happens to close their browser, come back a couple of weeks later, uh, they can still see the setting that they last saved. So if we go back to light mode and we refresh this, we're still gonna see light mode. And in this case, we're gonna store this data within the browser here. So we can use cookies or local storage for this. I'm just gonna use local storage and we're gonna set the value of theme and switch it whenever this value is clicked and then it'll always stay with that user. So that's what we're gonna do in the first half of the video. In the second half, what we're gonna do is actually show you how we can uh, store this information in the database. So if a user happens to, let's say, log into a different computer, they can still see the values because this data is gonna be associated with their account and not the browser itself. So that part, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Django. So if you happen to know Django, um, you can follow that portion. But if you just wanna see the front end or get the concept, if you don't understand Django, uh, just go ahead and watch through. But we're gonna do that in the second part of the video. So before we get started, let's just go ahead and recap our code really quick. And right now I have a pretty simple file here. It's just a folder called light dark. And we have one image for that profile image. And we have an index.html file, which I'll get into in a second. But uh, for our CSS files, we have a dark.css and a light.css. So these two are completely identical minus the fact that uh, the colors are different. So if I go to light.css, you're gonna notice uh, certain colors for the text and backgrounds. And if I go to dark, which I'll bring to this side, so between light and dark, the values are pretty much the same, uh, just the colors are different for certain things. So we have that and we import that style sheet right here. So by default, we're gonna import light.css and I'm also using bootstrap, so I threw that in. That's gonna be for, uh, for the buttons that we're using for this class right here, but that's about it. And as far as the layout goes, we have one div and that's gonna be our box. So this value right here, we have our box here and Within the box, we just have some text for the title. So we have an H2, a P tag, and the two buttons. So our JavaScript, we're gonna write right within here. And I commented it out for a second. Um, I'm actually gonna write this code fresh, but I just wanna be able to see it as I code. So let's go ahead and just get started. And the first thing I wanna do is to this CSS file right here, I wanna give it the ID of my style sheet. And we wanna be able to get this value right here and change the value of href. So whenever we change this, if, we, if this gets changed to dark.css, the entire page will change without having to reload it. So we're just gonna work with this value and change that on each button click. And we're first just gonna change that and then we're gonna set the local storage. So we'll be able to see it in effect before we actually set the official value. So once we have the ID of my style sheet, we wanna create a function here. So I'm gonna copy this right here and this function value is gonna be uh, swap styles. So we're gonna say function, and we're gonna call it swap, and then styles is gonna be camel case, so capital S. And the value we're gonna throw in here is gonna be sheet. So we're gonna pass in one parameter here, and this is gonna be triggered on each button click. So whenever a button gets clicked, we're gonna throw in a different value, and then this sheet value is gonna get the value of our CSS file. So we're gonna do document dot get element by ID. We're gonna grab this style sheet right here and we're gonna change the href value of it. So we're gonna say href and that's gonna be equal to sheet. So in order to trigger this function, we need to add an event handler onto these buttons and I'm gonna do that in line. So within my button right here, I'm just gonna say on click and the function we're gonna trigger is gonna be swap style. So we're gonna trigger swap style whenever this button is clicked and if we click light mode, we wanna change the value of the style sheet to light.css, and we wanna do the same for dark. So whenever dark is clicked, we wanna change the value, trigger the same function, and change this to dark.css. So we're gonna get this CSS file now. So we passed in the parameter of dark.css here, that's gonna be the value of sheet, and we're gonna change the href, href value of our link here, so we're updating this. So let's just try this. I think this is it. I think that's all we need to make it work. So if I go to dark mode, light mode, we just switch the values. And if I refresh it, we're not storing this value just yet. So 
Notice that whenever I refresh the page, we go back to light mode because that was the first style sheet that we loaded in. So the next thing we wanna do is actually set local storage. So once we change the value, we just wanna say local storage and we wanna say set, and I think that's value or item. Let's see what we have down here. So set item. And remember local storage takes in a key and a value pair. So if I go to local storage right now and I inspect it, let's go to application. Right now we don't have any values. Actually we do, but I'm gonna delete it. So we don't have any values right now and we wanna set that. So if I go into here, we're gonna set the key to theme. So that's gonna be the name of it. And the value itself is gonna be set to sheet. So once we change the value, we're gonna set local storage and we should see it updated. So now if we go to dark mode, we set it. If we go to light mode, now we're just changing it because we already have that value. Now, if we refresh it, we're still gonna see the original theme pop up. That's because we need to get this value on the first load and query local storage rather than uh, just allowing it to get the original CSS file. So in here, I wrote some logic. So the first thing we wanna do above the function is to get the theme. So we're gonna say var set theme. And for this, we just wanna get local storage whenever the page is loaded. So we wanna say local storage, remember that's camel case, so a capital S right there. And in this case, we're gonna say get item. And the item we wanna get is gonna be theme. So we're gonna get the value of theme whenever a page is loaded. And we first wanna say that if that theme doesn't exist, so on first load, we're not gonna have it, so that's gonna be null originally. So we're gonna say if and then we're gonna write the conditional. So if theme is equal to null, let's go ahead and set the value. So we're gonna trigger this function right here. And we're just gonna say swap styles and we're gonna trigger light.css. And then we wanna write else here. And then if that value does exist, we wanna swap styles and set the theme to whatever the value of local storage is. So let me console this out really quick so we can see it. So we're gonna say theme and let's actually throw this value in. So if local storage right now, in this case, uh, right now we're at dark.css, so we should see dark.css be consoled out. So theme is not defined, let's see what's going on here. And this needs to be set theme. So if set theme is equal to null, we wanna use light.css. If, uh, if it's not null, we wanna get the value of local storage, whatever that value is. In this case, it's dark mode, and we wanna set the value. So theme right now is dark.css, swap styles is not defined. Let's see what's going on here. Swap style, and we need to remove the S right there. So if it does exist, let's go ahead and get the current value, and that's it for the front end code. So let's try this. And now we're in dark.css. So if we go to light mode, we're gonna switch back to light mode, and then theme is consoled out as light.css and go ahead and refresh your page and you should see this value stay. So that's it for the front end portion. Now in the back end, I'm actually just gonna go through my Django project, recap what I did here. I'm not actually gonna code along, but I'll just explain the concepts. Okay, so this is our Django project right here. And I'm just gonna recap the file structure and then I'll actually go into the data structure and some of the functionality. So right now we created our Django project. We have one app called base and we configured our static files, so we have dark and light.css within our static files and our image within our images folder inside the static file. So we configured this in settings.py and the first thing I wanna pay attention to is gonna be the model structure. So right now, uh, normally I would create a model for a profile, connect that to a user in a one-to-one -one relationship, but because I'm just trying to show the concept, uh, I created a model called settings. So setting is gonna be connected to a single user and right now it's a one-to-one -one field. If you were to have multiple settings, you probably would switch this to a many-to-one relationship, so a foreign key uh, model here. And we set the name. So the name will be something like, um, let's say theme color or just theme. And we're gonna set the value and the value will be the actual file name. So dark.css or light.css. So let me actually pull up the admin panel here and I'll just show you what's going on. So. If we go to forward slash admin, and by the way, you wanna create an account if you're downloading my source code, uh, make sure you create a user uh, for this account. So I think you might need to create your own and then log in because uh, the app will probably break. I didn't really configure everything. I just wanted to set up and show you the demo and the actual structure here. So 
within our setting, we have one setting associated to a user. So right now the value is dark.css. And when I go to my Django project, if I go to light, we're gonna see if we refresh this, this actually updated the database and we switched it to light.css. So that's what we're doing with this model is just that one-to-one -one relationship. And we're constantly gonna change the value of the value attribute here within settings. So once we have settings here, let's just recap these views and see what's going on. So in the first view, which is the page that we load, we're just gonna render out this index.html file. So we're gonna load up the page. It's pretty similar to what we had in the last page, uh, but we do have some differences because we are actually gonna be making some API calls. So the first thing is whenever the page loads, we want to pull in the user data. So we wanna get the user settings instead of just getting that from local storage. So we have our API call, we return this back. I consoled out this data and we can see that the first user setting is dark.css. So that's the value we just changed right here. So I believe it should be dark.css if I refresh that. So we wanna pull up the data. So within index, we make the call to user settings here. So I'll also pull up the URLs. So we go to user settings and we serialize that data and we return it. So that's our serializer that we have in serializers.py and within update theme here. So whenever we get that data and the user clicks one of those buttons, so if they click light or dark mode here, we're actually gonna send an API call back to update theme. So this URL that's gonna be update theme and we're gonna get the theme that was set we're gonna take that data and we're gonna query the user settings model and we're gonna change the value to the data that was set in. So we're gonna take that data, we're gonna save that setting and then the user, whenever they reload the page is gonna have that new setting now. So we're still gonna set local storage but that's kind of how the functionality goes and the views that we're gonna work with. So let's recap the actual page and the flow of it. So we still have the bootstrap file, we pull in the style sheet but this time it's from our static files folder. So static and then CSS and then light.css. If we go to the box here, this is all the same and this is where all the values change. So because we're using Ajax calls, I went to the Django documentation and we got the value of our CSRF token because we are gonna send post data. So this is all from the Django documentation and I'm gonna minimize this. So we create a CSRF token when we send that data and we wanna get the file path to our static files folder. So I said CSS file and we go to static and CSS. So we're gonna set that value just to point back to the static file folder. And within swap styles, this is where a few things get changed up. So we're gonna take that, that style sheet and we're gonna to go to our style, our CSS file right here. And then we're gonna append our sheet. So whatever the value is, whatever button we clicked right here, we're gonna take, we're gonna set to, we're gonna set that path to static and then append a forward slash and then the name of that style sheet. So that's gonna be a little bit different from what we originally set. And then we're also gonna set local storage to that theme. So this is all pretty much the same. Here is where a different value comes in. So update theme right here. So this is where we're actually gonna send the data to the back end. So within update theme, we're gonna trigger this URL, so we're gonna send data to this URL path, and we're gonna take that CSRF token, pass it in because we need that for post data, and we're also gonna throw in theme. So theme is gonna be set, where did we set the value? Oh, that's passed in right here. So we're gonna take the theme that we passed in, that style sheet, and we're gonna send it as a body, so we're gonna stringify it. In the view, we take that data, we parse it, and then we query the user, once we have the user, we're gonna get user.settings. So the settings model, we're gonna update the value to the theme that we just passed in. Then we just save that data and that's how the user data is passed in. So I did kind of skip one step here and that was to load settings. So whenever a page is first called, we trigger load settings on the initial load. So here we go to user settings and we get the user data. So we wanna get the settings value. So we make the call right here. And once we return the value, we're gonna take the data that was returned. So that's what we consoled out right here. So this is data. If we look at that, we're gonna take value and we're gonna set that to the theme. So we're gonna say data.value, that's gonna be the theme name. 
and we're gonna say if the theme is light.css or null. So if it doesn't have a theme, uh, go ahead and trigger swap styles, the original function that we had. So up here, we're gonna say that's gonna be light.css. Else if, if the theme is dark.css, go ahead and throw in dark.css. So that's what we're doing. I think that's pretty much it for the functionality. Um, I will have the source code, but we just had to change up the values and we're setting data to the back end. And I also wanted to show you the model structure. Again, you'd normally want to connect this to like a user profile instead of the actual user model, just because we don't want to manipulate that. But you can do this however you want. Um, I hope this makes sense and I hope you enjoyed the video and it helps you with whatever you need to do.